Good day, viewers. Welcome to our today's class. Now, given simple stress and strain, we are going to be looking at this numerical question. Question number five. It says a steel bar is 900 millimeters. That is the length, overall length of the steel bar is 900 millimeter long. It has two ends. Of course, the two ends are 40 millimeter and 30 millimeter in diameter. And the length of each rod is 200 millimeter. Now, the middle portion of the bar is 15 millimeter in diameter and 50, 500, sorry, and 500 millimeter long. 500 uh, long. Now, if the bar is subjected to an axial load of 15 kilonewton, we are asked to find the total elongation. We are asked to find the total elongation. So, first thing first, I'm going to be Representing this question in a diagram form here. So I have a rod. I have a rod. Now this rod is said to have two ends. So I have one end here. I also have another end here. Now, we are told that the overall length, of course, okay, the steel bar is 900 millimeter long. That is the overall length of this steel bar is 900 millimeter. So I have the overall length of this steel bar to be 900 millimeter. I have 900. So this is what I have. So next, what, what does it say? It says its two ends are 40 millimeter and 30 millimeter in diameter so here the diameter here is 40 we have 40 millimeter diameter here of course and here also we have 30 millimeter diameter so this is what we have, this is what we have. so next it said the length of the each of the rod is 200 millimeter. That's the end, length of each rod of the two ends is 200 millimeter. So I have here to be 200 millimeter. Of course, and here also the 200. Here to be 200 millimeter. This is what I have. So next, the middle portion of the bar, which is from this point to this point, is 500 millimeter long. So I have here to be 500 millimeter. What I have. And, and what if the bar is subjected, subjected? Okay, the middle portion of the bar is 15 millimeter in diameter and 500 millimeter long. I spread that as 500 millimeter long. So I have 15 millimeter diameter. I'm just going to write 15 millimeter diameter here. Now, if this bar is subjected to an axial load of 15 kilonewton, we are asked to find the total elongation. Now I'm going to be bringing out my parameters for this particular question. Before I do that, I can decide to name each part of this rod. Here I can call here section one. I make here to be my section two to here my section three. Now the length of section one is what? Of course, it's 20 mini, it's 200 millimeter. The length of section one is 200 millimeter from the question. 200 millimeter. So I have length subscript one to be equal to 200 millimeter. What do I have next from the question? I have the diameter of my section one. The diameter of my section one is nothing but 40 millimeters. 40 millimeter. Let's move on to section two. Section two, I have my um, my length to be 500 millimeter. So I can just say L2 is equal to 500 millimeter. What do I have next? The diameter, which is 15 millimeter. I have the diameter D2 is equal to 15 
we need theta. Next, my section three, I have my diameter to be equal to what? To be equal to 30 millimeter. First, I can count my length L3 is equal to 200 millimeter. I have D3 to be equal to 30 millimeter. So this is what I have. So next, of course, the steel bar overall length is what? Is 900 millimeter. So the length, overall length is equal to 900 millimeter. Yes, this is what I have. So if the bar is subjected to an axial load of 15 kilo newton, so this load is, the bar is subjected to an axial load of we have 15 kilo newton here. Of course, we have 15 kilo newton here. So my load is equal to 15 newton. What do we have next? We are told to find the total elongation, taking it to be equal to 200 giga newton per meter square. Of course, giga, they say, stands for what? One giga is equal to 10 to the power of 9. So my E, okay, my E, equal to what? It's equal to 200 giga. 100 giga newton per meter. So we are asked to find the total elongation. That is the L. So from here, you can see that this is my data is given, and these are what I have. So next, from our relationship of stress and strain and also our modulus of elasticity, we know that E equal to sigma all over small e. Of course, this is stress and this is strain. Now, we also know that E is equal to the L. E is equal to the L. That is our change in length all over original length. And we also know that sigma is equal to P all over A. So, of course, just like we did in our previous class, we can substitute the values of E and sigma in this equation. To do that, we're going to have E to be equal to, we have zig, sigma, which is P, all over A, all over P, which is what? Our changing length all over our original length. This will be nothing but P, this will be nothing but P, all over A. Of course, if we take the inverse of this, we're going to have L upward and what our change in L downward. So E is equal to PL all over A PL. So from here we can make our change in length the subject of this relation. It implies that so what we have here is what E equals to what? Equals to PL all over A change in length. Plus multiplying, it implies that we we'll have PL equals to E A by change in length. We divide both sides by E A. What do we have? We have our change in length to be equal to P L over E A. That's our change in length to be equal to P L over E A. Now this is what we have. Now don't forget for this for this bar we have three sections. So this formula can be written as our change in length for our first section, of course, we know that P, which is our force, is constant. So P remains the same. Our length will be for section one, which is one. We have E, which is constant also, but we are going to have A of one. That is the area. Since we are giving diameters for all the sections to be different, of course, we know that the area is also going to be different. So Having known this, we also know that we are going to have the change in length for the second section to be equal to P L2 all over what? All over E A2. And similarly, for the last section, our change in length to be equal to P L3 all over E A3. So this is what we have. So next, what are we going to be doing? From here, we are going to be we are going to be converting our 
units, which are in millimeter to meter. So now if we do that, of course, we are going to be dividing them by 1,000. If we divide 200 by 1,000, it will be equal to 0 0.2 meters. If we divide 40 by 1,000, we're going to have 0 0.04 meters. If we divide 500 by 1,000, we're going to have 0 0.5 meters. Similarly, for 15, what are we going to have? We are going to have 0 0.015 meters. 0.015 meter. For 200, we are going to have 0 0.2 meter. For 30, we are going to have 0 0.03 meter. Now, this is what we have. So now, we go over to calculating our area. We are going over to calculating our area. Now, to calculate area, we know that A, area, now we are going to start with section one of this bar. To calculate the area of section one of this bar, we are going to area A is equal to pi by four into what? Into our diameter. But since we are dealing with this section first, we'll be using the diameter of this section, of course, which is D1 equal to 0 0.04. So we have 0 0.04 per square. Now if we solve this. What are we going to have? We're going to be having 0 0.00125 meters squared. 0 0.00125 meters squared. Now, this is our area for the first section. Now, let's move over to the next section. We have A2 to be equal to what? Pi by 4 into 0. Point what? Now, for the second section, we have 15 millimeters. Of course, we have converted it towards 0 0.015 meter. So we have 0 0.0, we have 0 0.015 meter. 0 0.015. Of course, we are squaring it. Now, if we solve this, it will give us nothing but 0 0.000137. We have 0 0.000137. So this is what we have. So next, we are going to be looking for the area of the third section. Now, I'm going to be wiping this side of the board. I'm going to... For the third section, A3 will be equal to what? It will be equal to pi by 4 into... I have what? What do I have here? I have my length, my diameter rather, is equal to 0 0.03. For the first section, so I have 0 0.03 squared. And if I do this, what will I have? I have 0 0.00078 meters squared. 0 0.00078 meters squared. So this is the area for the top section. This is the area for the second section. And this is the area for the first section. So what do I do next? I have my formulas, what do I do next? We are asked to calculate the total elongation. Now, total elongation will be equal to what? We will call to PL1, that is, it will be called to the elongation of the first section plus the elongation of the second section plus the elongation of the third section. So we have elongation of the first section plus elongation the second section plus the elongation of the third section. Now, of course, we know that the elongation of the first section is equal to this, that of the second is equal to this, and that of the third is equal to this. So I'm just going to include their values. I have PL1 all over what? All over EA1 plus PL2 all over EA2 plus PL3 all over EA3. So next, what do I do? I can factor out P and E from this place. If I do that, I'm going to have P all over E to be into the bracket of I have L1 all over A1 plus L2 all over A2 plus L3 all over what? All over A3. 
Hill 3. This is what I have. This is what I have. Now, I know the length of each section. I know the areas of each section. Of course, the modules of elasticity and the load has been given. So I'm just going to increase the values and calculate my total elongation. So I'm just going to be wiping this side. Um, will be equal to what? P. Now P is what? It's 15 kilonewton. So I have 15 here. All over what? All over E, which has been given as 200 giga newton per meter square. So I have, and don't forget, we are told that one giga is equal to 10 to the power of 9. So I'll be having 200 times 10 to the power of 9 newton per meter square. So this will be 200 times 10 to the power of 9 plus into the bracket of what? Of L1. That is the length of section 1, which is equal to 0 0.2 meter. So I have 0 0.2. All over the area of section one, which is equal to 0 0.001256. Of course, I have 0 0.001256. This is plus the length of the second section, which is 0 0.5 meter. And 0 0.5. All over the area of the second section, which is 0 0.001. 176 1767 plus lastly the length of the third section which is 0 0.2 meter have 0 0.2 all over the area of the third section which is 0 0.0 point what? 0 0.0000768 close the brackets now this is what I have. I can wipe this place. This is what I have. Now if you solve this, what will you get as your answer? If you solve this, you're going to have nothing but 0 0.0002454 meter squared. So if I solve this, I'm going to be having my elongation to be what? To be 0 0.00 Zero two four five four. So now the total elongation of this bar will be zero point zero 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 two four five four meters. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more video. Hit the notification button so that you're going to be notified whenever we post something like this. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more and more problems. Thank you.